Welcome to the show, guys. World War Three. We've been on the brink of chaos since around 9-11. Um, and ever since, the threat of nuclear war is so ever imminent. Billionaires, millionaires, and just regular people are all preparing for World War Three. Bunkers being built underground facilities, FEMA in their large camps with uh, millions of disposable coffins being accumulated all over the United States, uh, probably all over about everywhere, um, but for sure in the United States we've seen this, this massive white piles of coffins. It's really um, a scary sight whenever you, you see the pictures of some of these things. I mean, just millions. They're prepared for a huge population of the of the earth to be eradicated from a most likely nuclear event. Um, guys, let me read an article here. Um, if World War Three started right now, if Russia started World War Three, military strategists believe this is what would happen. I pay very attention, close attention. Um, the picture here you see is a joint special exercise of logistic supply units of Belarus and Russia. And they've been pre preparing for this for a couple of years. Uh, Russian military defense. If drawn into war against Russia, U.S. and NATO forces would first begin combating Russian cyber attacks, misinformation, and third-party surrogate forces, uh, said retired General Herbert Hawk Carlisle, former head of Air combat command. Carlisle said fighting likely would follow a period of steadily rising tensions and warnings that would give the U.S. enough notice to start moving more airplanes, preparing logistics, and increasingly combat capability in Europe, he said. Nevertheless, the Russians could seize the initiative and move quickly, putting the U.S. at a big disadvantage. Neutralizing Russia's air defenses would be one of the most crucial and dangerous missions for the Air Force. In the early hours of host hostilities, as Russian tanks, fighters, and bombers roll into the Baltics, Air Force jets from England, Italy, and Germany would arrive to tease out Russia's advance surface-to-air defenses and then try to destroy them. So, that's the beginning phase of, uh, of World War III. That's what we would see happening. Um, as you see on screen here, um, tanks being transported by train through the countryside. That's a very cam camouflaged uh way of transport there and it it blends in with the uh the trees you got a green train green tanks very camouflage system um this photo was published for a reason um obviously you can see by the angle it's not a satellite picture but i'm sure our satellites and spy planes have already picked up on things like this um Now, with the spy treaty that's uh, between Russia and the U.S., where we're each allowed to fly over each other's countries trying to collect information, which I think is absolutely ridiculous. Um, I don't see how that would uh, solve tensions between, you know, communism and the East and the West. 
it, it don't uh, seem very pliable to me. Um, but, and obviously, I don't think it has been working. Uh, President Trump wants to withdraw from that. I mean, obviously. Um, I know it goes both ways, but spying should be something you do and try not to get caught, not something that's openly available with no repercussions. Otherwise, what's the point in MI6 and CIA and FBI and all these other agencies and the DIA? Um, a lot of you probably don't, may have not heard of the DIA, the Disinformation Agency, um, which is out there, and what they do is what it says. They spread disinformation um, through military roles, um, the aerial phenomenon known as you know, UFOs, UAPs, um, work close in hand to the CIA, um, to misinform all of America, especially America. That's their, their America's their their goal to to disinform their own country, the rest of the world, but mostly us here in the U.S. Now let's continue on with if Russia would st start a, a war. Um. The Air Force's fighter squadrons in the region would see the most ferocious air-to-air dogfighting in decades since World War II. Um, now, guys, tensions and world conflicts is at its highest since World War II. Right now. Um, also, uh, there's huge Russian buildup. Putin is building up the Russian military in Europe, and that should raise questions and tensions right there, what I'm saying. Um, but continuing on here. Simultaneously, the 173rd Airborne Brigade Combat Team in Italy and the 2nd Cavalry Regiment in Germany would join NATO forces to head to the fight. They, also, they alongside NATO forces, would face as many as 22 maneuver warfare battalions that Russia has in its western military district along NATO's border. Reports cite a window of 36 to 60 hours for Russian forces to reach and begin siege operations on Talan and Riga, the capitals of Estonia and Lativa. Quality light forces like the U.S. airborne infantry that NATO players typically deploy into Riga and Talan can put up a stout resistance when dug into urban terrain, but the most, but the cost of mounting such a defense to the city and its residents is typically very high. Said a Iran study on uh, deterring Russia. On screen here, you see. U.S. Army paratroopers from the 82nd Airborne Division parachute from the C-17 Globemaster during a joint operation access exercise mission, Camp Macau, North Carolina. Um, this would be a huge asset to us, uh, our paratroopers, just like in World War II where you drop behind enemy lines and try to take a hold of... Um, specialized route bridges um, different targets that might need taken out or uh, controlled that would uh, that played a key role in war too uh, it's a very dangerous role a lot of times you're dropped off target uh, by yourself trying to regroup with other battalions and units and and it can be a cluster but um, still it's very very useful in combat. Now continuing on here, the Army's 173rd recognized its own weakness if thrust into combat with Russia, 
according to internal review documents, as reported by Politico. The report says states GPS communications would be disabled easily and quickly, forcing troops to rely on rusty high-frequency radio communication skills. The brigade also has eliminated air defense or electronic warfare units. NATO forces, especially armor brigades in Poland, would have to cross the Kaliningrad Corridor, wedged between where Poland's border meets Lithuania and hedged on each side by Russian territory and Belarus. Meanwhile, the Russians could carry out previous promise to attack Polish missile defense systems. Incremental invasions of small areas of Baltic territory may or may not provoke a NATO response, but experts agree an attack on Poland would. The current two U.S. Army Armored Brigade combat teams in Europe would race to the flight but be outgunned and likely destroyed quickly. A good example of the upgun striker said retired Army Colonel Doug McGregor, referring to the new strikers that are outfitted with the 30 millimeter cannon that would be fine on the Mexican border. That information will be going in 10 minutes against the Russians. That formation would be going in 10 minutes. Done. Over with. A Russian strike through Belarus into the Baltics would also be so quick and overwhelming that, like with Crimea, NATO would have to accept that those states are now in the Russian orbit, <clears throat> said retired Army Major General Robert Scales. I think it's very easy to consider a NATO scenario where small units of NATO forces, to include American forces, could in fact be overwhelmed in the event of an attack, said retired Army Major General Richard Nash, a former commander in Bosnia. During recent war games, NATO tried to use indigenous forces to assist the outcome. It was bluntly a disaster for NATO, according to the RAND study. Now, this study studies military operations. NATO infantry was unable to retreat and was destroyed in place. So that's what would happen to a lot of these forces. They would casualties would be very, very high in the event of World War Three. Yeah, and we would see the same casualties as what we did in World War Two. Millions and millions of military and civilian casualties just wiped off the face of the earth very quickly. U.S. land forces accustomed to air and sea dominance would face Russian interference with their support and could be on their own for hours, days, even weeks at a time. I cannot get there in time are the kinds of armored forces required to engage their Russian counterparts. On equal terms, delay their advance, expose them to more frequent and more effective attacks from air and land-based fires, and subject them to spoiling counterattacks according to the RAND study, once again. While Atlantic-based Navy assets would be ready to engage, naval experts say Russian maritime maneuvering, along with their allies, would be able to delay and tie up the Navy elsewhere. We can hardly pull the entire Navy out of the Pacific to do battle in Europe, lest we sacrifice our Asian alliances along with stakes of immense value, said James Holmley, a professor at uh, U.S. Naval War College. China and Iran's navies could keep major parts of the U.S. Navy blogged down away from Western Europe. That they would be keeping us away very, very easily. The well, Black Sea would play a major role in Russian maritime planks. Um, as you see on screen here, a, a photographer captured uh, Russian military fighter jets. Um, doing maneuvers in the past year. Um, as you see, their air capabilities are very, very near our capabilities. And they, I've heard Putin say in several military uh, talks that uh, they're outranking and out 
have more capabilities than us, especially their new missile systems. Okay, guys, um, I'm not going to make this video any longer. Uh, this is part one of a part two show of what would happen if Russia started World War III. Um, don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button and make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload a new video. Thanks for watching, guys, and part two is coming real soon.